Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce our next speaker. That's Mr. Leonardo Capitanio. He's the president of the Italian Nursery Stock Exporters Association, ANVE. Um, uh, Eduardo, uh, uh, Leonardo, he comes from Monopoly and uh, in Italy. And from the beginning, he's been actively involved in the management of his family business, Viva Capitanio, in Italy. Um, and he has been active in um, the board of ANVE since 2008. And he has uh, then from 2015, uh, he's been the president uh, in recent years of ANVE, of his association, and he is a delegate to uh, AIPH. And uh, we're very pleased that Leonardo is able to speak to us about the situation in Italy and the initiatives that they have taken there. Uh, please, can we have the presentation? Thank you. Good morning. I greet the President, Mr. Ostrom, AIPH members and all those present who are following us from all over the world. It is an honor for me to face with the best colleagues in our sector and I will try to explain to you some issues about plant health. In particular, I will explain to you some of the main news on European regulation of phytosanitary management. I will focus on the serious emergency caused by Xylella fastidiosa and conclude by telling you what we are doing in Italy with the Hanve Association to help producers to bear the burden of phytopathological management. First of all, I would like to show you the overview of the legislation that currently regulates the production and handling of plants. It is a real phytosanitary system that consists of several laws recently implemented, all integrated with each other. In particular, we are interested in the EU Regulation 2016-2031, where the prospective measures against harmful organisms are established. Two other important application rules were then generated from that regulation. The EU Regulation 2019-2072, which classifies harmful, harmful organisms by dividing them into quarantine and non-quarantine organisms, identifying protected areas and all the requirements for importing and handling plants in the European Union. And the EU Regulation 2019-1702, establishing a list of 20 priority pests that are particularly dangerous to our territories. The priority organisms are quarantine pests that have a severe impact on the economy, the environment and civil society and are subjected to specific and exclusive control measures. This is the list of the 20 priority organisms, including the Xylella fastidiosa bacterium. To summarize, therefore, at the level of normative categorization, Xylella fastidiosa is present in these two regulations. This attention is due to the, to the fact that it is an organism considered among the top 10 dangerous pathogens. Here is the presence in the world. As you can see, the facility of diffusion is par particularly marked in the European Union and uh, in uh, America. Considering that the first interception date in Europe back just to 2013. And this is how this bad, this, this bad story began in Italy. The first interception took place in a very small portion of southern Italy, in Gallipoli, in the southern part of Apulian region, where the phytosanitary authority decided to adopt eradication measures. Moving forward with the monitoring, it emerged a situation larger than expected, but still considered restricted and fully controllable. But then, in July 2014, the National Authority, assessing the result of the great work of monitoring and analysis that had been organized in the meantime, decided for a change of strategy, preferring to adopt no more eradication measures, but containment ones. So, as you can see in this slide, in the years 2013-2014, Monitoring was still carried out along the demarcated areas, 
as it was provided for by the eradication measures. In this case, the green dots are the negative plants, while the red ones are the positive ones. And then move on to monitoring with exclusion of the infected area, the southern part, as required by the containment measures, to enhance monitoring in the containment area and buffer zone, and further to monitoring along the Apulian region, even in the free area. It's easy to understand how this wall affair was caused quite a few problems for a local nurseryman. In fact, even now, companies cannot grow and sell the specified plant listed in European legislation. The problem is even more acute for companies specializing in the production of one or two species, such as Olea and Prunus, which have been enabled to move and sell the 100% of their production and have had to invest at their own expenses no, to, move, to move it to pest-free areas. But many problems followed also for nurserymen in the rest of Italy. Therefore, in pest-free areas, due to the lack of confidence of European customers who, for at least three years, demanded the strangest certification and declaration. Currently, the situation has significantly improved, even though there are still bans on import from Italy to the country of North Africa and Middle East. Furthermore, the same legislation imposed to all European operators special requirement for the handling of specified plants and many additional requirements for the six species considered highly, in, highly sensitive, such as Coffea, Lavandula dentata, Nirum oleander, Ole europea, Polygla myrtifolia and Prunus dulcis. Here you can see the measures currently in force of the new regulation. To establish a demarcated zone and its related infected zone and buffer zone. The first is set up by a radius of 50 meters around the infected plant, while the second by a radius of 2.5 or 5 kilometers, depending on whether eradication or containment measures are implemented. If monitoring and analysis have shown that the bacterium is scarily spread, the buffer zone can be restricted to 1 km. As I told you before, this is the situation in Europe. The emergency has spread to many countries in the Mediterranean area that now have to live with this organism. Here we see the current situation. In Puglia testified today how careful monitoring gives us a high level of confidence about the real distribution of the pathogen, which, despite being advanced, can be considered limited. As president of the National Nursery Exporters Association and with the cooperation of all members, we have developed several tools to assist companies and allow easier management of plant disease. Just in the recent week, we have presented to the regional phytosanitary authorities the first pest risk management plan, as determined by Article, uh, by Article 91 of Regulation 2016-2031. It is an improvement effort that the Italian nurserymen, nurserymen are making to ensure the health of the plants. According to my opinion, these are procedures that every good nurseryman should adopt to identify their own risk and mitigation measures. To describe the traceability process, to start staff training on specific plant disease, to assign duties and responsibility to their collaborators and determine the chain of responsibility within the company. We have also included this aspect in the new national certification system named Vivai Fiori. A quality disciplinary has been created for horticultural companies. It is characterized by a very detailed checklist with requirements such as traceability procedures, retrieval of the guts found infected, training for employees on the correct identification of physiological deficiencies and presence of phytopathologies, proper issues of passport, current botanical identification, 
knowledge of regulations, including that on invasive alien species. Furthermore, for several years we have created an insurance policy with a public contribution up to 70% of the premium to cover natural disaster and, in addition, the direct damage from plant disease such as Xylella fastidiosa. It is a unique appliance for the protection of your company. We are close to the Italian and European authorities in order to extend the facility to cover indirect damage such as the impossibility to move and sell the production from the nursery. In order to keep companies informed of all these regulations, we are updating the fitoweb.it portal, a tool which contains synthetic data sheet with all the requirements for handling plants. We are currently working to insert the requirement of regulation 2072 and furthermore all the new requirement for exporting to the UK or other third country are already online. Finally, we have relations with political and administrative representatives. Just recently, we met with representatives of the Italian and European parliaments to present some of our proposals. In fact, we believe that Xylella pest will persist in our continent. Therefore, it is important to identify policies in order to preserve territory and business development. For these reasons, we believe it is necessary that a nursery with healthy plant but placed within the demarcated area should be able to move the specified plants to free, to free pest area. Instead, in the case of some infected plants inside the nursery, we believe it should be allowed to move the remaining free pest plants thanks to the mandatory traceability procedures and diagnostic tests. Finally, it is important to facilitate the compensation procedures of company unable to move and sell the production. I hope this presentation has exposed the topics on plant health enough. Above all, I hope that I have been able to explain to you the high impact of the presence of Xylella fastidiosa in the nursery and the high number of procedures implemented against the spread and all the efforts engaged to improve the trust of the plant production. Thanks for your attention.